Hello, everybody, and welcome to Beyond the Briefing. Hi there, I'm JP Dice, and I love to talk to you about weather and airplanes like we do every week. And this week, I want to focus a little bit on what you guys are using before you head up in the air to look at weather data. Example, say you're sitting at the FBO and you're planning a trip. You're trying to get from point A to point B. You want to look at some radar data and see what's going on. Well, there are several ways to do that. There's different kinds of weather products and radar data that is available. And it's very important that you know what you are looking at and understand what you're looking at. Let's go full screen here and I want to show you something. It is four flight and we look at four flight quite a bit. This is my home turf and I just got in just a little bit ago. Did a little flight from uh, Shelby County Airport uh, in uh, Alabaster down to Key Field in Meridian and we've got a little bit of precipitation out there right now and uh, take a look at that. You can see uh, some data, some radar data showing where those cells are. You know, if you have ADSB, you can also see this radar data in the air on four fly, but you can also look at it on the ground. And you may have noticed when you go up here and you choose different kinds of weather data, you can choose composite or you can choose lowest tilt. Lowest tilt is really what you want to be using most of the time because you want to be able to look at that storm uh, really at the lowest level and you want to have the best accuracy with that. Now I want to tell you something. What you're looking at here is still what we uh, we call kind of composite data. If you, you kind of expand it, you can see it shows weather data across the country. Composite means it's all of these weather radars uh, across the country and we're making one big picture out of it. So when we zoom in, the resolution is probably not quite as good as it could be. Now it doesn't mean four flights bad, it's great information, but I always encourage folks to have multiple ways to get weather information. One of my other favorite apps besides four flight, if I just want to look at weather radar data, let's go to this one. This is called Radar Scope. And if you don't have this app, you need to get it. It costs a little bit, it's about $10 a year. But what you do have, notice the radar data now. Is that a lot better resolution? We're looking at single site NEXRAD radar data off the Shelby County NEXRAD radar. You can look at any NEXRAD radar in the country. These are the National Weather Service radars that uh, we use in, in television broadcasting. It's also what the National Weather Service uses to issue uh, warnings and, and that sort of thing. So you have all of these different products. And if you look right there around the radar site, you see that little donut hole that's uh, near the uh, Shelby County Airport. Uh, that is called the cone of silence. That's where the radar can't pick up. That's about a half a mile in diameter, half a mile to a mile around the radar site. But let's look over into uh, uh, Tuscaloosa County, right there, Tuscaloosa and Jefferson County. Look at the resolution in that. And you may say, well, that's a little bit pixelated. You want that because you can see a lot about the storm. Anytime you see some of these really pretty apps where it's all smoothed over, you don't want that, folks. You don't want it smoothed over. You want to see the higher resolution so you can see the storm structure. Also, I'm going to tell you, this is faster information. This is coming in every time that NEXRAD makes a scan. If it's in one of its faster scan strategies, you may be getting this data in every three minutes or so. Uh, on Average, it's about five, six minutes, but uh, with the faster scans, when you have a severe weather day, it's coming in. You know, you may have it every two to three minutes, depending on how they've got that radar set up. So you can see the higher resolution data. That's called base reflectivity. That's the super res data, tilt one. That's what you want to be looking at. Again, we're looking at the Radar Scope app, and you can search for that. Radar Scope is available uh, for uh, the iOS as well as the Android devices. I mean, let me show you the difference between composite NEXRAD and base uh, reflectivity. So we're in base reflectivity. Here's composite NEXRAD. Whoa! It looks so much hotter on the radar, right? It really blows things up. You don't want to be looking at this when you're trying to plan uh, your trip. You're at the FBO looking at radar data. You don't want to be looking at this product. What I want you to be looking at is the super uh, res data. Tilt one because you're able to have a lot better resolution. You can see right there, you can see the individual thunderstorms, the thunderstorm structure, uh, much better than you can with that composite data. So make sure you're using that. And the one thing about radar scope 
you have to choose the radar that's closest to where you're looking at. Let's see, I, I can move this map down to Florida and it looks like, hey, there's nothing going on in Florida. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna change radars here and look at the Ruskin, Florida radar. Wowzer, look at that, okay? This is kind of my home territory. We're looking down into uh, Polk County and Osceola County on into uh, Orange County, Florida. Look at the resolution on that. Is that not incredible? I want to go back. I'm going to compare what you're seeing there. By the way, it had a little warning on there. It does overlay the severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, that sort of thing with radar scope. So you're looking at radar scope. Let's go back to ForeFlight and we'll head down to Florida and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Can you tell how it looks different? considerably different. It's kind of smoothed over. You're not going to have that fine detail with ForeFlight and the radar data the way they have it at least right now as you would with Radar Scope. Radar Scope's not an aviation app, okay? It's a weather radar app. This is an aviation. This is kind of the Swiss Army knife. It does everything. So you've got some good data in here with ForeFlight. It gives you the lightning information and all of that. But look at that. We go back into uh, Radar Scope and there you go. That is a much different picture, right? You've got the light rain, and if you look at the bottom, there's a little scale at the bottom uh, on your app. You can also animate it, and there we go. You can see the thunderstorms around the Orlando, Florida area. And if we want to change radars again, look at this. You see that TMCO? Anybody have any idea what TMCO is? That is a radar that we're using. It's called the Terminal Doppler Weather Radar. This is even higher resolution, faster data that's coming in uh, from the Terminal Doppler Weather Radar that's located at MCO, Orlando International Airport. So you can get very high speed data uh, with these terminal Doppler weather radars. They're not everywhere. They are located at, usually at the larger, the, the Bravo airports. You've got them in Atlanta, you, Chicago, Dallas, Fort Worth, Orlando. These are the radars that are going to give you some fantastic, uh, almost real time information. So if you have the ability to look at one of these terminal Doppler weather radars, uh, go ahead and do that because that's going to be fantastic. Notice this little thing here. Uh, in fact, I think I can draw on here. You see this? This drew on this. That's called an outflow boundary. And we'll go full screen. That's like a little mini cold front that's being kicked out from those thunderstorms. What does that mean for you as a pilot? Uh, the winds are really going to pick up. May, may see 30 or 40 mile per hour winds from that. That's not rain that the radar is actually picking up. That's little dust particles and things on the ground. So it shows up as a little boundary. And what happens at the surface, the winds pick up and you may have, the, again, 30 or 40 mile per hour winds and that could impact your flight. So if you're out ahead of that, say uh, you're at an airport out here, uh, you are soon going to be experiencing some fairly high winds. So just keep that in mind when you see a feature like that on radar. Many cold front colder air with it. You may see the temperature drop maybe 20 degrees. They're actually quite pleasant in some cases if the winds aren't too bad. So what we're looking at there, of course, the terminal Doppler weather radar. Can you see the difference? I'm going to switch from terminal Doppler weather radar to NEXRAD radar. Not quite as defined, is it? So remember, and again, that's the next rad radar out of Melbourne, Florida. Let's go to the Orlando Terminal Doppler Weather Radar. And this is the one uh, near Orlando International Airport near MCO. That's going to be higher quality data. Of course, you can get this data uh, on Radar Scope. There's not a whole lot of apps that you can get this data. Radar Scope's one of them. You're not going to get it on ForeFlight. That's why I always encourage you to get Radar Scope if you need high resolution radar uh, data. In fact, the data on this particular app would be good enough for, you know, if the National Weather Service needed to issue a warning, you could do it off of this app. We've used it in a backup role, even in my work as a, a, a TV meteorologist. So just incredibly different in the resolution. Again, I want you to look there and we'll go back to look at Fourth Flight. It's, it's a blobby kind of, it's, it's a composite data, it's smoothed over. You don't really want that smoothed over look when you are uh, planning a flight. So this is okay in the air, but on the ground, it's better to look at some other radar tools in conjunction with for flight there. You want to look at, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you're, you're planning a trip, you want to look at all the different resources that you have 
and ForeFlight is one. You can get a lot of weather information there. As we've, we've talked about, that app is, is kind of the, the gold standard, that and Garmin Pilot for aviators. And then you go over to Radar Scope, and that's kind of the gold standard when it comes to single site NEXRAD radar. So what is NEXRAD radar? NEXRAD radar, those are the, they're called WSR-88Ds. We'll go back to a NEXRAD and take a look at it. Uh, the WSR-88D was the radar system, the Doppler radar system that the Weather Service started installing in the 1990s. One of the first installs was actually in Melbourne, Florida. They are S-band radars. They don't suffer uh, from some of the attenuation problems that you have with C-band radars. They are 750,000 watt radars, 25 foot uh, in diameter dish. They have a very narrow beam width. They're high resolution and they, they give us an incredible picture. Some of the other data that we can get from these NEXRAD radars is called dual polymetric data. This is the data that has enabled us over the years to look at tornado debris signatures from the radar. You can actually see a tornado that is lofting up debris. That radar signature gives us a better confirmation that something's actually happening at the surface. Radar does a good job of telling us what happens in the atmosphere, but not necessarily all the way down to the surface. Now remember, one of the key aspects of ground-based radar is the fact that it's limited by the curvature of the Earth. It's not really a function of power of the radar, but the curvature of the Earth. The farther that you're looking away from the radar site, in this case it's Melbourne, Florida, the farther you're looking away, the higher up in the storms that you're going to be looking because the Earth, the curvature, the Earth kind of falls away from that beam. I want to show you some of the radar data that you can get here, and we're going to show you something called hydrometeor classification. And this is from the dual pole data that's available on radar scope. And what we're looking at here is essentially the legends telling me light to moderate rain. There's a little legend here at the bottom on your app. You can't see it on this particular display, but there's a little legend there. And if there were hail, it would give you a red color to indicate hail. They also have indications of icing in clouds that you can see in real time from the radar, as well as even biological targets like birds and things like that. Insects are easy to pick up uh, with dual polymetry or dual uh, polymetric uh, uh, radar had the opportunity a number of years ago to work on the uh, really the first dual pole project for television broadcasting and that was up in in Huntsville when I worked up there Huntsville Alabama uh, we had a, a system that we developed there in conjunction with the University of Alabama in Huntsville so we're back to the uh, next rad radar and we're looking at the reflectivity data let's look at something called velocity data if you've ever watched a meteorologist do severe weather coverage you've probably seen a product that looks something like this what we're looking at is actually the winds. The green is the wind blowing toward the radar, the red's the wind blowing away from the radar. Where you see the red and the green meet, that's where you have rotation within the thunderstorm. And you can actually determine if you have a rotating thunderstorm or even a tornado that is trying to form. So lots of information out there. I want to make sure again uh, before you crank the plane up and you go on a trip, you are looking at the best radar data that you can find. And I'll give you kind of a case in point. If I were sitting around and I was in my, you know, Piper Cherokee, and I'm at Orlando uh, Airport right now, uh, what I would kind of go through, if I was an Orlando executive, I would look at the current METARs in the area. I would find out where the cloud bases are. I would also look at the radar data. I would determine if we have any lightning in the area. Uh, and then I would figure out if I'm on an IFR flight plan, is that something that I can get into? Is there convection? Do we have thunderstorms? If we have thunderstorms, you may have updrafts and downdrafts of uh, five, 6,000 feet per minute that you would want to stay out of. So looking at this, heading up to the north out of Orlando, uh, based on what I'm seeing in terms of the radar returns, not a, really a, a bad setup, especially if you are a... Um, IFR rated pilot. If you can find the cloud bases are at four or five thousand feet, you know, you can stay underneath it and just kind of pick out the rain shafts and so forth. But you never want to be in, in like this guy down here or uh, down toward Highland Park or between, say, where I'm from, 
uh, frostproof Florida and the Lake Wells in this, this particular case, you're going to see some pretty intense updrafts and downdrafts in that. But notice with this particular product, you're able to really discern the resolution of that data down to about a quarter of a kilometer. Uh, again, compare that with composite data, which I don't want you using. That's composite. I call it blobo vision. I want you looking at the super res reflectivity that's going to give you a better picture on what is going on. So again, at the ground, this radar data is updated fairly quickly, can be as quick as three minutes in the air because of the data transmission and everything and it being composite data. If you're looking at data link weather sources, it may be upwards of 15 minutes old. Hope that did help you in uh, your flight planning. Again, Radar Scope, a great app if you are looking for weather radar data. It's not necessarily a forecast tool. It will give you some warning information, but it is good for looking at single site next rad data. I use it all the time. I've been using it for years. Four flights also that great tool to get the other aspect of what you're looking for. Uh, in this edition of Beyond the Briefing, hopefully you did take that away and you have a better idea of some of the tools that I like to use when I'm sitting in the FBO and trying to figure out if I'm going to go on a trip or not. As always, I want you to uh, check us out every week if you like this channel. Of course, subscribe to it, tell a friend about it, and our mission here is to help provide weather information and uh, weather education to keep you safer in the sky. For now, I'm J.P. Dice for Beyond the Briefing.